Welcome back, everyone, to the college championship. We are in the middle of our final corner final. Yeah. I always get a little bittersweet as we go through a bracket because it means you're closer to the end. It does, and it's just like you see that it's a best of three, and we've had just two games in all of the best of threes so far in the quarterfinals. So I'm hoping that we are actually able to finally get to that final odd number there as we have got that 13th win for Bay State. So maybe that's not the only three we're going to be able to see today. But we did have that switch up as well. We saw that red side was selected for UC Irvine here for this second game of the best of three series, which they didn't get to have a lot of time to sort of talk about the implications and the consequences of just that because Bay State had picked a, like they got such a successful draft in that game one on blue side, like Colomer had pointed out. You got Wukong, Gwen, and Ari on blue side. That feels almost illegal at that point with such strong picks on this patch. And so that's expectation number one for me for UC Irvine of saying, all right, some of those picks either need to be put on that band board or they need to be on your side of the map as well. Try and take some of those OP picks as well. And I actually did some research here too for the one win that uh, Bay State had sort of given over to UC Irvine in a way, if you're really pepping up how dominant they are. They went double AD carry with Lucian mm -hmm. in the top lane and Jin down in the bottom. And it was just heavy prioritization on shutting down Bajani as much as possible. So that might just be the strategy that Irvine really needs to get this game online and grab a victory here in this series. If you're gonna have your bot laner go a bit more of that supportive utility style, then yep. why not throw another ADC elsewhere exactly. that can help out in that damage category? As far as what we're seeing so far though, Trundle and we have the Trindamir both banned away. Once again, the Lucian that you just mentioned, again, not going to be available. Neither is the Gangplank or the Senna. Senna clearly being that target over towards Mr. Dot who does have a preference for the pick. But very much during that game one, as the analyst desk had noted, in line with a lot of the meta picks of 12.9, and you can expect them to have some of that similar notion. Wukong working out very well that yep. first time around. See if it does the same in the second. I can't believe that they just got this pick again, to, as a matter of fact, that yes, the gangplank is very threatening. It's just the Wukong are like, getting grabbed on game one and game two is a, it's just a big warning sign for me. Though the Volibear this time around, instead of the Graves, might be the answer that they are looking for. The Graves did not do as grand, mostly because for, for me, it was just Saranok on that Ari was able to just like pair up with either Dragon Min or with Sword Blue and just really shut down that power farming that Duong Pro was trying to provide. And they get it again. They literally get Gwen, Ari, and Wukong again. Irvine, I need at least a 15-page essay with 40,000 words explaining to me why you allowed that to just happen two times in a row. You know how much homework they get because they're in college and you're going to give them more homework, thankfully, Coco? Thankfully for this, it's summer break, so they, are get, they get A's on it nonetheless, but they still need to create a good conversation for me in their draft to why they're going with this Viego once more. Though, if it's going to be that top lane, I did compliment on how Barrick did really well on that Viego early game against that one, being able to constantly pressure up against her and create those trades and sort of create that zone of control where we, what we want out of UC Irvine to create the leads early on while you have that more utilitarian bot play. Because they did have that gold lead up to about 2.2k or so, but it didn't feel like enough that was there for them to lean on yeah. when Bay State felt that they were online enough to take that full on team fight. But maybe the Volibear this time around is what they need to get that going early, try and have that presence among these lanes to pressure Bay State and put them behind. And I would also like something a little bit more aggressive. Thank you very much there from Cinna in that mid lane. The karma felt a, a little bit awkward for me of being able to neutralize a lane, yes, but also when it came down to those fights where Bay State really loves to just get into a situation of getting out of the lanes and fighting in those condensed jungles around those objectives, that is where this LeBlanc is going to be so much more important than that karma of being able to just get past that flank, do what uh, do what Dragon Min was doing on this Wukong, get to that DPS, blow them up, push them away from your front line so that it allows time for Duong Pro and Bear to start to get those resets for this Viejo and Volo Bear combo as it is a straight run back from Bay State once again. Though the only cheese difference that I could see is, hey, let's throw Gwen in the jungle this time and Wukong in top and just do everyone pick your champ style. Though, it's just, I don't think that's going to happen. It's just Gwen top lane nonetheless as Kaisa, final thing. 
I mean, more than any other league, I do feel like collegiate, you can rely upon the players yeah. flexing those champions around as much as possible as we saw in that game number one. But like you're saying, things worked out well, yeah. so there's no reason to add those ankle weights on for game number two. But a big difference for UC Irvine here, having that Kaisa, you already had mentioned going into that first draft that that is something they might bring out if they wanted to go the more aggressive angle. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's what they want to do here. That might just be the answer here because it's a very similar top side of the map with that Viego but it is a different conversation here in that bottom lane no more utility looking for that damage looking for that constant aggression here to get those early trades and it is both in that mid lane and in that bottom lane so now for myself where it's saying okay you can play the lane slow again and you can look to get that slow build of economy sort of catch base state out when they're really trying to overreach for those objectives and overreach for any kind of advantage. This time you're playing the same ball game and having that volatility in the bottom lane might just be the new sort of switch up for UC Irvine to get a lead and also really push it further and beyond. And they do have to push it further and beyond to make sure that yep. they stay in this tournament base state being up 1-0 in this series. But it is only a best of three. We don't hit best of fives until we get to semifinals tomorrow. So got to keep that pressure on. You just saw them circling the arena. The 2018 champions of the college championship UCI wanting to repeat that here this year again. But. You did tell me a bit about kind of some of the points within these different compositions that we brought to the table as they take to the rift. Who are you favoring, though, with their lineups? I, at this point, I, I still feel like with how the early game had gone with UC Irvine finding that lead and that 2,000 gold advantage fairly efficiently and being able to hold that lead very well until they got picked uh, constantly and then that ace had followed through, both of these compositions still have a good start off to the game. Yes, I'm expecting Dragon Man to start up on this top or quadrant uh, at his blue buff and then sort of rotate down to where he can create that volatility. But also with UC Irvine, the one pivot for me would be Duong Pro trying to camp out this mid lane a little bit more where Saranok doesn't have the ultimate to disengage as efficiently where Senna can jump in get that lockdown with the chains on the LeBlanc, and then the Volibear's raw damage early will be able to shut down this mid lane and then also convert that with a top lane lead with how Barrack had performed previously. Yeah, how will Duong Pro play to those lanes? I've loved hearing from him, actually. I believe it was the interview when they took down one of my alma maters in oh, Illinois no. State University, uh, talking about how it has been playing with these freshmen, a lot of the hands that they have, the mechanics on which he can rely, and then just trying to read each of the game states and where he wants to facilitate that lead and maybe over towards that top side on Barrick if he creates that same advantage on this Viego is where he will do so. We get that Gwen in the top again too, so a lot more slices. I, I kind of find it poetic in a way that Duong, uh, Duong Pro is is sort of the senior here on UC Irvine. And also, well, the degree he's going for is education sciences. So it's like, yeah, he's, not only he's kind of applying his degree here when he's trying to teach these youngins how to play the game and play it with him. So huge shout out for him and hopefully they're able to grab some victory and sort of get to the point where they can repeat that 2018 victory where he's here and on his graduating year as well. But all of that is in due time. And it's also a little bit on a time limit because we saw how quickly base state just blew up last game and were able to just take that game and throw it away and give it over to themselves. So they do have to start to put the pedal to the metal fairly early. See if they can find those catches, see if they can find base state, try and bite off more than they can chew early on, grab that 2k lead, and then carry on forward. And look for these neutral objectives a little bit more. I felt like they were rather ignored previously in that game one. And I want to up the ante here, especially with how much early aggression that Evola Bear can provide. That was the big difference maker in game number one. While that gold lead was mounting for UCI, the early dragons, the yeah. Rift Heralds were all going base state's way, even though one of those was technically a steal yeah. for them later on in the dragon fights. It's still an advantage that they could rely upon once they did get that team fight that cracked the game wide open. That was a very unique scenario. I'm sure UCI will be wary of that and any skirmishes they get around those objectives during this game too. Yeah, they, they, those are the kind of lessons that you learn very very quickly even in a series where it's like all right they caught us when we did a Hail Mary play we have to be a little bit more aware that when that comes around and I have not seen too much of how well a LeBlanc can really tame this Ari early on and, and I'm really liking it at the moment doing very well at farming keeping up with pace 
keeping the Saranok really close to the chest against his turret and giving space for Duong Pro to get some additional information as well. And overall, you see Irvine starting off great here in this early game, though it is still a rinse and repeat of that bottom lane. Sophist and Sword Blue are constantly oppressing uh, both Mr. Dot and uh, Kim Dao. Same support matchup as before. The difference here is in the bot laners. So again, Kim down, poking down a little bit on Sword Blue, who's just keeping this Tristana protected. But the Kai'Sa wanting to scale up into the later portions of the game. Duong Pro making his way through the jungle. Had secured that Scuttle over on that top side previously. Traded for the Scuttle in favor of Blue side by Dragon Min over on bot with about 30 seconds to go until the first Dragon spawns. Here we go, Dragon Min, see if can find this advancement in the top lane. Doesn't have the Blast Cone over, but he can always clone hop in. And there's no vision there for Barrick, but he just put it down. Very Ooh. important there to see if he can s sort of sniff out any of the aggression, especially with how far forward he is at the moment. And there it is, he mm. sees it in. It's a bad news here for Barrick, and he's getting out of dodge as quick as possible. Still has a flash available if needed. Got burned down by the Ignite. There's the flash response. So does end up losing a summoner spell, but it's traded for that Ignite on this top side. And honestly, for me right now, I would be start starting to scream if I was bare. I'd be like, jungler's top, jungler's top. We should try and look for this dragon right now because the resets are already coming in here for both of the bottom lanes. And if you had stopped those recalls early, because it was Mr. Dot and Kim down who were late on their reset. If you stopped it, Duong Pro was already down in that bottom lane vicinity. Dragon had just spawned. Quickly take it down with the Kai'Sa and the Volibear damage. But no, you're allowing Day oh. State to attack mid lane. Flash over the wall into the Zenith Blade, but the flash responds here by Sinna. Gets burned down by the Ignite as well. And a final pop, Saranok draws first blood. And it's Bay State that makes the decisions first. They aggress on top lane to put Barrack on the defensive and then they use that reset to attack the mid lane. That is that early planning that we wanted out of both of these teams, and Bay State has learned that lesson, and they have fit back. Senna using the teleport to get back to lane, make sure to clear out this wave that's directly under the turret, but Saranok now establishing that lead in lane with the kill slightly ahead in CS as well, now getting the backing opportunity to show that higher power that you get as a result. Gives them some space as well. Extra gold has that last chapter, as you mentioned. The reset. Though with the, the level six, though, for Sinna, does get to catch up, and the EXP differential is not too bad for them. But in favor of that jungle mid duo here for the UC Irvine by just an inkling or so. I want to I want to start getting some kind of attention here, and thankfully we are getting it. Duong Pro and Sinna getting out of that lane. Let's dive this Gwen and get some kills on the board. And Dragonman is over towards the bot side, so this means Bajani's all on his own. Blasted on go. down directly under the turret. Evens out the kill score. UCI making the play. But perfect as it is, you scream over. Jungle is top, jungle is top. Let's get this dragon now. Always, it's a trade for trade. Always trying to find something that where there is no resources on the other side of the map of your opponents, you are trying to take those resources away from them. And that is what base state has been able to learn very quickly, grabbing that dragon priority. And they do lose their blue buff and some of their top jungle quadrant as well as a consequence. But at that moment, this is also a great time of seven minutes in. Harold's going to be up in just underneath a minute. So hit a couple more waves, go for another reset for Sophus to see if he can maybe get a noon quiver and finish that up. I'm going to have to hold again. Barracks getting attacked. Another play with the outnumbering here on the top side. Bajani is starting to feel a little targeted here, but there's nothing quite for base eight to take advantage of on the bot side. Instead, it's Dragon Min pushing into the jungle yep. to get some clear. Yeah, that's that rinse and repeat of trying to get as much resources away from your opponent as possible. I want to get those wolves, but the reset had come in here from Duong Pro, so he doesn't want to stick around too long. And it goes back to that original point that I was discussing, that the Rift Herald is available. The reset was wanting to be coming in here from Sword Blue so he can rotate up and exactly prioritize that next neutral objective. And that is what's so good for Bay State here, constantly looking for that neutral objective to continue that advance. Though they're losing out in the gold, it's that same argument that we had just talked about that had kept them in game one. The statistics and the raw stats that you get out of the Rift Herald and out of the dragons of these neutrals to keep them in the fight. And winning out in some of their members in terms of when they're leveling up first and hitting that XP right now, a bit of a delay on yep. Kim down and then even Mr. Dot just being slightly behind Sofa Sage on getting the full capability of the kit here. Yep. So Bay State 
prioritizing the objectives. They got the first dragon again, check on that. Getting the first Rift Herald again, check on that. And UCI, they don't want to put themselves in a way where they can get picked off. It really does feel like a run back of game one. Sure, you have a, just a little bit of a difference for some of the champions on UC Irvine. They've got some more damage in their pockets this time around when it comes to those team fights. But Barrick, you have no flash for the next 45 seconds or so. He's smelling blood in the water, so he's going to play defensive and hang back for a bit, but also Sword Blue in mid lane. Mm, Solar Flare makes Sina have to sidestep this a bit and is able to use oh. the passive to get away. Serenog wants to go for it, but the burn is good. The Ignite came back up and another kill here for the Ari player in Serenok. Let's see what they can do with it. That was actually a great job there from Serenok reading the action from Sina, knowing that he was a little tense, making some errors. Speaking of errors, oh, hello. tried to back, but getting stopped. The knock up, Kim down, flashes over the wall. Barrett goes for the retreat under the turret, but the ultimate's activated by Bajani as well, and the damage is oh. good. It's not good enough, though. Burn won't be able to complete for the kill. So everybody just retreating finally. Ooh. Again, another tense situation between base state and UCI in this top lane. This is again where we get to that position where this Gwen is starting to get very intimidating. Yeah, you're sitting on a control board. You could technically auto attack it and waste some time, but I feel like at that point, it's more about the timing of getting back to your lane faster. You can go ahead and take care of that control ward at another time. You can come back up while Barrack is going to be forcing that wave out to hit the reset. And it allows some additional moments for the rest of your team to look elsewhere on the map here. We have a good amount of time for both UCI and Bay State to try and get some vision out just to look for where the junglers are going to be. And Sword Blue again hanging out in this mid lane. Solar Flare just forever seems available and the lockdown follow up again using the pressure that they can exude. But this time oh, around, there's trouble. a bear in the vicinity and knock up after the exhaust forces the flash away from Sword Blue. They go for it. They eventually secure the kill. But Duong Pro is also marked down low and declawed after that one. Bay State fights back. Another one for one trade in the mid lane. Sword Blue constantly trying to create that oppression against Cinna on this LeBlanc who had been doing a phenomenal job doing just the same earlier on, but is now starting to fall back in that economy. ADCS to 93, that is the beginnings of a concern for me with Cinna on this LeBlanc as Barrick though, dishing out the damage here with that Blade of the Ruin King pickup on the rightful owner in the top lane. It's now we got 40 seconds until the next dragon. Two times in a row where you see Barrick, right? Where yeah. they're pressuring him oh, when you were expecting the pressure to be bought, but when he knows they're not there, he does go for as much damage onto that Gwen as yeah. he possibly can. And he's pretty much the difference between these two teams. Sure, it's a 400 gold advantage team-wise for Bay State, but that's a thousand gold lead for Barrick because of the CS and the kill differential that he has. So you need to either start really using that lead that has been created in the top lane and say, all right, we can surrender this dragon once again. It's just a Cloud Drake. It's not a soul point or anything. Let's prioritize this top side because all the rest of the resources here already are there for the side of Bay State. And now dragon spawning, that Rift Herald still available for Dragon Min. Game one, they dropped it down mid, did the classic play so they could try and create that pressure. And you can assume that they'll do something very similar this time around, already outnumbering Sinna, who knows that it's dangerous yep. territory on this mid side. That Rift Herald again used to sort of create that priority in the mid lane and grab some solo plates as well. 160 gold over to Saranok on that Ari. And all this spread out means, well, one turret over for the side of UC Irvine. They'll be able to get the first turret once again this time around. But it is that Dragon 2 for Bay State. And at this moment, I'm also curious on where this Dragon Soul is going to be, because it could be once again influential, because it means that you have to continue to play towards that bottom quadrant of the map and force to play Bay State style. And that is something that UC Irvine really fell into the trap for when it happened in game one, getting caught out, always having to play to base state strategy. Though we do have this siege coming up, Sophist really trying to greed for that turret, wanting oh. to get it, but is unable to, doesn't have enough damage just yet. There's still the oppression on the top side and the collapse coming in. Oh, they found Dragon Min. Eliminated, Wukong taken down, but luckily for base state, the wave has finally arrived on the bot side. So that last turret plate can go over in their favor, which means we have a turret down yep. for both sides in different side lanes, but a pick achieved for UCI. Not too bad. And that means they can get some more bot control once again. See if you can 
catch up. Maybe you can get a couple turret plates here too. You do have Duong Pro down there as well to continue to hover around and make sure that you can cash in. You've got 20 seconds to do that. So maybe you're able to grab one or two of those turret plates for yourself and give Mr. Dot as much gold as possible, uh, as possible. get to that mythic item, and then you can just sort of rotate once again because I want to have Cinna on this LeBlanc start to bounce the side lanes a little bit more. You can't really efficiently set him up as much as like an Ari or a Gwen could but you can at least manage them, temper around, and make sure that you can always answer on those side lanes a lot more quickly with that LeBlanc style. Yeah, so with it being a similar game state, Coco, and you talking about the LeBlanc specifically, how much of a difference maker do you think LeBlanc and Kai'Sa can be in this portion of the game compared to the Karma and the Jin that they had prior? It's just more raw damage here, and with a squippy, uh, squishy composition excuse me, for base state, it might just be just enough weight to break the back of base state's style. Varric, once again, is still this person I'm looking at the most. They're, he's the one that has been able to get leads by himself and create that independent application. But you gotta help out, you gotta be a team with this. And now he's got the resources for just that. Rift Herald is spawning and it might be a fight over it or it could be a just a surrender. I wanna fight here, but it just seems like UCI is not confident just yet. Everyone that's not in this topside vicinity also should have a teleport available to them, whether that be Cinna here on the LeBlanc or a Bajani here on the Gwen. So if any contest does happen, but it doesn't look like that is what we're in for. Base State getting themselves a second Rift Herald once more and are able to drop that down somewhere. They already did so much damage to that mid turret from the last Rift Herald and that bot lane pushing in their favor because of Bajani spending that yeah. time down there. And for, for me right now, Irvine's biggest concern and most necessary sign of improvement right now is communicating the leads that you have and recognizing who you need to start to continue to invest in. Because I'm still hounding at making sure you can sort of group around that one person. And I think they have clicked with it now. I can see pretty much everyone's hovering around Barrick at this moment and seeing if they can hunt with Kim down on this Nautilus, find a pick, and then use that new damage that they have in the Kai'Sa and the LeBlanc to blow up one target and to get those resets online for Barrick to be the true carriers of this fight. But it looks like it's actually Sword Blue that has caught out and forces this fight instead. I am Bajani activating the ultimate, throwing down some of that needle work, but everyone from UCI, as soon as that solar it. flare went down, they disengaged. Yeah. They didn't want any of that fight. They immediately got it out of there. And here, this is what I was talking about with Sina, always trying to control those side lanes on the LeBlanc. You have the capability to chase down Serenok very quickly. And with the teleport, you can just sort of manage the lanes. You can't set them up as efficiently, but it's at least managing them to where base state always has to think of something next, where they were able to find Duong Pro on this rotation. And I think he's as good as dead here. That's a lot of resources spent for this kill. The thumbs up coming a little early before he saw Dragon Min oh, here, wow. but there's another one to follow up. Manages to survive and get back to base safely. And mostly for me, it feels like Dragon Min didn't want to use too many resources to try and grab that kill. He didn't want to get caught out too far, but that might just be what happens here and now. The rest of UCI is here to pincer down and Sin has got him on the flank. Uh, the lockdown, the root, the hook to follow from Kim down. Elimination of Dragon Min here at the top of the fight. And Sword Blue going in the opposite direction with Bajani. They know they don't have an escape and are hoping that Sofa Sage can get enough damage onto this turret. Going back in, Sword Blue knows that his life is not much longer as Bajani tries to get a slice down onto Duong Pro, mostly to buy that time for Sofa Sage to get out of here. Their lives eliminated and given for the good fight. Very well done here from UCI and a perfect time as well. Dragon spawns in just under five seconds. And they can go ahead and rotate, grab this objective, get some priority in these lanes, and then go for a good reset. That no. was a great setup for that it fight is, from that. But it, the thing is, is it feels coincidental. It doesn't feel planned to me. So for that, it means UC Irvine is sort of really reaping the rewards of the mistakes that Base State is providing. Base State it still feels like the team in the driver's seat. And for me, that's great news for Base State of saying, hey, they're playing to react to what we're trying to plan. They're reacting to our aggression. And it's just us either overstaying our welcomes or maybe just trying to overextend just that little bit more, trying to greed for those kills onto Duong Pro on the side lane that has been punishing us. But here's another catch, Dragon Min constantly hounding down, making sure he can always put UC Irvine off tempo. And that's where I have Base State still feeling in favor for me in this 18 and a half minute game.
But sometimes that's the name of the game. Even if you don't have the control over the actual momentum, the way that things are shifting, if you respond correctly, get a few kills, you can capitalize upon it. That's what we saw from Bay State in game number one when they got that ace that really was a difference maker. And it looks like UCI are looking for similar opportunities, starting to trust in the firepower that they have when yep. they go for at least the even matchups. But the Rift Herald getting dropped down here. That turret itself extremely vulnerable and multiple members of UCI for the response. And after no. it goes down, everybody else is here to follow. Elimination of Kim down here right at the top. Flash over the wall from Dragon Min. Bay State yet to lose anyone in this fight. And they got that turret there. So they're feeling pretty good about it. Also slicing into that gold lead. Yep, and breaking down some of that advantage as well. And it's still been very slim. It's only been just underneath that 2,000 gold advantage for the majority, and they just have been able to really get over that hurdle. I was thinking that that additional damage that Mr. Dot and Sina's new picks in this composition might be just that, but it's still that application, or a like the application of just reacting and not putting yourself in a more proactive mindset here for UC Irvine. And it's very difficult to do just that with the composition that Bay State has. And this is where I'm going to go back to sort of the constant berating that had been coming out of Columnar of like, why are you allowing these very strong picks to go on to blue side for free? For Gwen, Wukong, and Ari, you're giving so much priority and just raw natural advantage on this patch to the champions that are Bay State here in a very historically favored kind of matchup between these two teams. Strong picks that they're now warmed yeah. up on to boot. Yes. And you can see that in the way that they're handling themselves in these fights. With no dragon around, the Baron being up, both of the teams fighting that vision war. You can see lots of controls being brought through on both sides. Sword Blue sees many faces from UCI and there in response throws down the Solar Flare to try and put some distance, but it's not enough. Saranok was also chunked down halfway during that, so UCI now granted priority on the Baron, but a teleport coming through from Vajani. Is he going to try and make a play to stop this? Dragon Min is also in the vicinity. They don't quite have any vision for themselves available, and Duong Pro slamming himself onto the outside with the ultimate goes into stasis. Oh, a good no. old hit into Vajani. He is down, so UCI, they lose one, but they traded for two currently. Double kill here for the work on before. Oh my goodness, Barrick actually just taking over here and following up. Rocket jumps in in this form of Tristana slices through. What are you gonna do? You see, I putting up a fight. And a spectacular job there from Barrick. He had been able to grab the leads by himself through this entire game. And that Baron fight was looking bleak for a moment because of how much damage Baron was putting down down onto the back line of UCI, but Barrick was able to find that reset with enough time granted to him from Duong Pro and Kim down. And from there, it was just him making his own story, getting reset after reset, taking the DPS away from the side of Bay State. We can go ahead and watch this again. And it's a very odd positioning here from UCI. They know they need to get off of this Baron, but they're just not able to. They're trapped inside. But watch Barrick. He finds the catch. He's able to get Bajani first, the most important DPS there. And then on top of that, he's able to stack up, start to tear away with the true magic damage that Gwen provides to a team. And then it, it's just an absolute bloodbath. It's Barrick amazing for Barrick. Yeah, I mean, Viego is always somebody who capitalizes upon getting that first kill in yeah. fight. That's what really allows him to set off. And now 6-0-3 oh, on the damage. kill board. Major damage. We have seen the advantages that he's been able to put in lane, even when pressured by Bay State with a lot of attention being spent by everybody else. And now finally paying off in a team fight. But UCI, they still have a lot that they have to deal with because Bay State, they already had previously cracked into yes. a lot of those turrets. The map pressure wanting to expand upon that and looking for the next fight once it comes. And it just sounds and it sort of screams at me that a UCI still needs this Baron to really find that break and to force themselves into the defenses that is Bay State's base. Still haven't broken this tier one, two, and they're sort of prioritizing that mid priority so they can get just that but Mr. Dot might have to extend for it and Bay State, again, forcing their hand, being the proactive team that they are, knowing that they have the confidence to find one target and obliterate them and stop the resets coming in for Yusei Irvine's composition. Dragon is up, and they're going to try and sneak and sort of waste some time to be able to find it.
completely in the dark for Bay State on that Dragon side, but being that there was a lack of intel that kind of tells them all they need to know that UCI was going for that second Dragon, now tied up on the scoreboard, and everybody meeting in mid here as well. Solar oh, Flare go. goes down, but Johnny right in the back line came down once again, and Stasis followed up by another Stasis here with Duong Pro, but Sword Blue, the first to fall off in the supports, give their lives right here at the beginning, passive pop for this Senna. But nobody yet besides Sword Blue has fallen. I was looking a little bleak there because you see Irvine, they got caught out. They got oh, punished, but no, oh, Sinna! Down in the back line, Soap is Sage, the angle acquired, okay. but Sinna <laughs> eventually trades the life Dragon Man and Bajani say, You ain't gonna get away with that. I was like, okay, it's gonna be a one for one trade here. But no, they're able to grab that second kill. And a lot of that came in from the fact that Sword Blue had died and there was enough space from UC Irvine to sort of pressure back in. Bayek was able to grab the Leona Soul and then that threatens the reset capability to push forward. So Bay State couldn't try and fight for anything more. Got put on the back foot and that is where we saw Sinna able to find that weak point, get that flank and look for that additional kill, getting it to 14 kills to eight. And now they have finally been able to irk past that 2000 gold lead that they struggled to conquer in game one. They're at just underneath that, underneath that 3000 gold lead. They need to get back some vision control, some dominance here against this Baron. Force Space State to fight into you because Baron has been doing so well in these skirmishes. Well, the trades have been making all the difference. While there was that kill acquired onto Sofa Sage, the fact that Bay State responded to make sure they took down Senna, that could have been an opportunity yes. for UCI to maybe try and go for the Baron play, but they lost their mid laner. They lost that security. So wanting to find that opportunity for that big game changer and really crack it open. And the other unfortunate thing for Sinna in this mid lane for UCI is that you don't have your teleport off cooldown just yet. So being down in this bottom lane is a telltale sign that Bay State can start to push forward and get some aggression and get some vision and information down in this top quadrant around the Baron to where you are going to have so much difficulty to break into those defenses and have that confidence to try and look for those fights. And this is where Bay State can go fishing. They can look for Barrack and if they get Barrack, it looks like a barren play for Bay State. You have to be so careful with where you are and who you're with to try and irk your way into this river. But Barrick has been doing such a good job of where he should be on the map at any given point in time. Wants to push things out as much as possible, but a great awareness of yeah. when Bay State is looking to collapse upon him as UCI looks to do exactly that onto Saranoff here around mid. They've really been struggling with the fact that they haven't been able to get this turret just yet. So this is going to be a big difference for them when setting up for any of these future fights. They're able to get it. Now those teleports are finally off cooldown for both Bajani and Sina, respectively. So those side lane pressure in this bottom part of the rift will be back into an important duty of managing and trying to find oh. these picks. Kim down again, getting caught. I feel like this is like the seventh time, but no, it's Swan Pro that gets catched. Uh, the explosive charge isn't enough to finish anything off because of that flash away. And Bajani teleporting in a very dangerous situation here, tries to limit the vulnerability oh, as much no. as possible, but Barrick, he's starting to pop off. And that's when you gotta be worried. Going for the back line, Dragon Man right there. Another there Heartbreaker goes. to do the effect. The Solar Flare here used in a more defensive fashion, but Barrick, Barrick. Is still going with a triple kill. Going for more and more here. So the yeah. Sage manages to pick one up before falling, but that's an ace in favor of UCI which means it is a Baron in favor of UCI. And the triple kill coming in for Barrick, a phenomenal job, 9-0 and on this Viego. And from there, it was getting that one kill. Bajani falls, and the story unfolds. The reset's coming through, and thankfully for them, they've got the damage on just Volibear and Viego to go ahead and take this Baron power play for themselves, and the rest of the team can manage those waves to prepare for the reset that is to come through. And we can look at that once again. And you had called this out, but Johnny was just in such an awkward position, and it allows UCI to collapse down onto that one flank in this jungle fight and then reinforce Barrick on that reset. And then once that reset had come in, Barrick just had a playground to work with, and UCI could just pick at whoever they felt to assist Barrick in this advancement on the reset combinations. Oh. And it's just beautiful to watch when that individual is able to create that lead in lane and the team finally rallies behind them and are able to become the superstar that they've meant to be in this second game of the best of three series. Dragon's available though, so this next fight is very important.
7.7K gold lead for UCI. 28 minutes, even dragons for both teams, but Bay State are burning it down. No opportunity to take it away for UCI. Do they go through with the fight? Sinna going for the flank. They get the lockdown again onto Sword Blue, and the tankiest member eliminated. Sophie Sage has to jump out of this, but the spinning is too good. Ends up falling at the hand of Sinna. And the follow up here, double kill from Mr. Dot. Starting to see what the Kaiser can do in terms of damage, the Baron buff, and everything available. Yes, the dragon was taken by Bay State, but they lose out on the fight. And this is looking like potentially another back to back ace. Final slap by the Bears. Pa, UCI taking control. And let's see if they have enough time. 40 seconds until Sarah. Knock spawns, but 20 seconds on the board for everybody else. Sword Blue is already up. They are pushing to see if they can end this. They are on a timer, and if they can get this out, that might take us to that final game three. Durable enough, strong enough. A Leona all on her own cannot keep them away. Wants to delay, but look, even with Dragonman spawning right now, what really can you do? Tristana's here. Sofa Sage tries to break down, but it doesn't matter. The next is getting hit. UCI pushing us to our first game three of the quarterfinals. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Of course, a game three comes in from a salty run back composition mm -hmm. from Bay State. And of course, the lessons are learned. And though it is an expectation of granting a lot of powerful picks over to Bay State, it's also that replication of, sure, they're playing with something that they understand, but you had just played against that composition and you had created answers for it. So you see Irvine being able to get that homework done. They got back with that essay. And I'm giving a solid A plus for that. Very well done. And a huge shout out to Barrick dominant on that Viego. I don't think that's going through game three. Yeah, Barrick just so strong there and it's always the moments that you look at aren't just the ones where the pop-off happens. It's when you're getting targeted. Can you keep your mind in it yep. for when you can have an impact on the game? And that is exactly what he did. And for UCI to be able to turn the tables, they've got a lot going for them when it comes to going into game number three. While both teams are running up for their next battle though, let's break down this game with the analyst desk. Thank you, thank you, Coco and the Tigers. Well, I think that uh, you could say that uh, UC eye to eye uh, between each other. You know what? I don't know where that's going to that. What matters is that um, everything is fine and we're all good. Let's talk about that game real quick and not, uh, not yet yeah, this. Go. <laughs> we have a game three. Finally. We're going down to the we're final UC game. Tied. Yes, exactly. That's how you do a joke. There you go. Uh, <laughs> we're finally going to a game three. Very exciting. UCI looks so much better this game. I'm... I wasn't sure about giving up the champions that they did, but yeah. they proved me wrong. So congrats to uh, Hermes and all the guys over there. Uh, looked significantly better this time around. Yeah, we talked a lot about comfort after that first game for Bay State, and they literally just got the same five champions <laughs> again. Talk right. about comfort. UCI just beat them when they were at peak comfort. Like, this, first of all, completely breaks our analyst desk from the last <laughs> segment. <laughs> Sorry about that, but... Yeah, I mean, UCI, what a what a big comeback. I mean, and you can see how the comeback actually did surmount over the beginning of the game. How, again, it was slow to start, but the biggest point being was that UCI decided that, you know, maybe they want to try to be a lot more controlled going into this game. Maybe don't give up, you know, 5K gold leads right up top. <laughs> Definitely. I think the biggest difference for this game from UCI was the fact that they were able to be a bit more proactive with the Vola Bear instead of the Grave and the LeBlanc this time around. I think that mattered a lot in terms of them being able to get ahead early. Base State actually did get ahead pretty, like, in, from, like, 0 to 15, but the team fights later, especially with this Viego that we will talk about in a second, were absolutely massive for UCI to basically turn the game around and then close it out quickly. When the lanes started to break out, this time there wasn't as much control of Base State to force really large fights around in neutral objectives unnecessarily. Instead, what it was, it was really controlled play for, like, basically the first 20 minutes until all of a sudden we got UCI punishing the mistake of Bay State, setting themselves up to start themselves getting their snowball lead and then into objectives that let them control the game. I was really impressed with Mr. Dot as well in this game on this Kaisa. I was concerned with the Jin pick of the last game. It just did not do that much damage. This game showed me why I should have been concerned because he was really, really pumping out the deeps on Kaisa. Mm -hmm. And especially with, uh, you could say how it Akathian rained on top of them with the damage that he came out on top. I'm so sorry. It's not going to stop. At Don't apologize. That was great. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Smacks. Uh, that, what continued happening is that as the game snowballed forward, so did the onslaught 
of just intense amounts of damage that towards the entire team but there was one standout towards the towards that side which allowed them to do so because we're talking about the dps and that was abundant but there's so much more to that column definitely i mean the amounts of just damage that came out specifically from this viego you even see it on the screen right here along with the play that we're going to show in a second is just absolutely crazy uh we've been hearing teams talk about this viego top lane tech a little bit throughout the week uh, definitely you know you you would assume that michigan state might be the team to pull out because it's kind of weird but I was really happy with how I performed this game and it definitely seemed very comfortable from Barrick. But one of the big things is walking into the split with a bunch of freshmen, especially for colleges around the nation, you oftentimes have struggles of having players in mid lane, in top lane that are young and developing. Barrick came out of high school and was played in a national tournament in high school as well. He was picked up as one of the best prospects and this is his moment to shine where like he really goes crazy. They give him a Viego, a comfort champion, it's a very specific champion to him that does well and he went crazy on it to do the most DPS in the game here and let's uh, try to break down that viego in general because there's one thing that viego does really really well columnar isn't that right yeah uh viego does resets really really well all you need is one person to fall and the entire fight can just completely just be run over by that champion exactly because there there's one specific point about that so why don't you go and break that down first real quick all right Massive point in this game, 20 minutes in we're setting up around baron neither team can really contest this but uci is threatening it Watch Viego in this fight. Obviously, UCI is setting up. They can't really do it at this point, but Base State really has to force them off this objective because they are burning it really, really quickly. Watch what ends up happening with Viego in this fight. They focus a ton of CC and a ton of abilities on this Vola Bear. And then you just watch ready. Reset. Okay. Diving in around Baron. DMK is there. We're going to get another reset here. Okay. You guys see the theme so far. We're going to get <laughs> another reset here. And guess what? You took Tristana. Guess what Tristana does? When this ability goes off, you get a reset. So honestly, great play from Barrick all around. We are kind of memeing it with the whole reset theme, but absolutely well played by him, especially in this fight. From that point on, this game was no longer close. And this is basically the fight that ended up leading us into our first game three of national championship. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you could say that on that recess, it looks like the entire Olympic sigil that's up there too all spanned across with <laughs> them rings. But in general though, uh, it seems the base they decided that they want to keep things more consistent and go for more of these events as they got the blue side selected for themselves. So I think they feel pretty confident on their own with this and considering how we managed to switch things up so far this has been a trend we've seen before rebel yeah now base state gets the opportunity i suppose on blue side to make adaptions you know they got their champions in the first game they got them in the second game thinking oh this is going to be good enough we're going to have more than enough they got tested this is the millionth time in a row that this has <laughs> happened with uci yeah. so now they make adaptions to me i want to see top lane first off i think bejani has had pretty not great laning phases against barrack who's been performing great today for the side of uh UCI and their bottom lane also a response to Mr. Dot I think is in order. I kind of want to just see the same five champions in a row just <laughs> yeah. to say that we did it. <laughs> I think that would just be fun. And also, like you were saying, I think the lane didn't go super well for Bejani. I think if they do give more attention to this Viego top and make sure it doesn't get those resets, that might change the game. So there's my real analysis with it, but I also just think it would be fun. I mean, five champions or not, we'll have to see if base they can bring the heat with the final game of this series coming up right after this commercial break. Don't move nowhere. I'm watching. Yeah.